Two, this is SEL0320 representing JVS. So I'm about to do an exclusive interview with one of the stars from the Star Trek franchise. And I'm talking about J.J. Abrams' Star Trek, which is Star Trek, Star Trek Into Darkness, and then upcoming Star Trek Beyond. The name of this person is Jason Matthew Smith. Most notably, you could probably remember him from Star Trek 1 as being Cupcake, given the one that gave that one-two punch to our favorite captain. Um, I'm going to be actually being able to do an interview with him. This is all progression for uh, San Diego Comic Con that me, Joe, and uh, Jarrell's are going to, coming on July the 20th. And so I was able to get an early phone interview, and so this is what we're actually going to be capturing. You'll be able to actually hear this, and I'm going to be interacting with him for most of this term. So hopefully you enjoy it. Um, let's go ahead and give him a call. What do you say? All right, I'm gonna start up the quarter. <laughs> Put the timer up. Hey, how you doing? Is this uh, Jason? Sam. Hey, how you doing, Jason? This is uh, Samuel. I'm with the outlet JVS. Thanks for uh, having me and being able to do an interview with me. Uh oh, my pleasure, man. Yeah, man, I really appreciate it. So uh, I'm just gonna ask you a few questions, but um, are you ready for uh, San Diego Comic Con? Like, I know you're gonna be there, and uh, are you really hyped for it? Like, are you a big fan of the Comic Con conventions? Well, I, I have never been before. I've never been to any convention before. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm nervous, excited, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to get it on and, and see what, uh, what it's all about. That's awesome, man. Yeah, it, it gets really overwhelming, and there's so much to look at, so many stars, but it's a lot of fun um, that I've experienced before. But I'll go ahead and get down to the nitty gritty, because uh, some of your movies I really love. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get down with the questions. Um, based, okay. all right. Um, based on, yeah. oh, can you hear me? Yeah, we got a little delay, so don't worry. Oh no, I'm sorry. All right. Um, I'll go ahead and try to do the best I can. Um, based on your roles, like Eric Olick from like the Playmakers TV show, which is really good. Um, the character Cupcake from like the Star Trek um, franchise. You seem to be a very f naturally physical guy. And I was wondering, do you have a previous background in athletics? And does that prompt you to try to take more physically demanding roles in general? Um, you know, I'm a big guy, 6'2", 220. And uh, yeah, I played high school football and um, I was going to play college football, but uh, I, I saw the, you know, amount of practice and abuse that your body takes uh, <laughs> at that level. And I had a lot of friends that were blowing out knees and blowing out shoulders. I just figured, if, you know, I want to be walking when I'm 60. I should probably find a new career path. And uh, for me, that was acting. And, I've been very fortunate enough to, uh, to actually be able to play some sports. Uh, people like Eric uh, Olchek that you, uh, that you previously mentioned for uh, ESPN Playmakers. And uh, I get to live out of my dream to be able to play football without actually going through all the hard work those guys have to go through. But I don't know. You know, I think, I think uh, you kind of go with what uh, you're born with and, and the fact that I'm a uh, you know, big guy who's, uh, you know, got a big frame. I, I tend to play those, you know, heavier parts, more action yeah. uh, based parts. And, um, uh, but that's, you know, that's just the, the, the foundation for me. And I'm hoping in the future that I'll be able to show a little bit more of my range and, uh, and what I can do. Wow, that's, that's, that's actually really awesome. Um, yeah, I was curious about it. I kind of figured you had like maybe a football background just because Playmakers on ESPN, like that was one of the better shows at that time. And that, you were definitely one of the standouts on that one as being the linebacker. Um, so I guess that's a good segue as far as, you, 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and so that's a good segue into, I guess, a more personal question um, as far as your career path. So for me, just my question was, what really provoked you and drove you to strive to have a career in the film industry? Like progressing and getting your BFA at University of Cincinnati and then getting an MFA at North Illinois University. And then now, like, you're starring in so many roles now, like between television and film, and especially like the new up and coming Star Trek Beyond. So what really drove you to that point as wanting to be an actor? Well, I, you know, I think with most actors, it starts in, in, in their childhood. Yeah. And uh, for me, it was seeing films like Rocky, mm. the first one, and, and uh, Star Wars, and uh, later on, seeing films like Jaws, and Indiana Jones, and all those great movies that came back, came out in the late 70s, even Tron. Uh, yeah. It's almost limitless as to what your imagination can actually progress on film now. Uh, it's very true. Yeah. Um, so you said like for you stories and you mentioned like uh, being as a filmmaker. So do you have any up and coming projects that you're writing on or like about to direct yourself? Yes, I do actually. Uh, I haven't really jumped into the world of directing yet, but I've been writing for quite some time mm. on uh, little side projects. I, want to, I need more opportunities, like we talked about earlier, to show my range. And uh, so my wife and I have just kind of teamed up and, and joined efforts to, uh, to try to create some of those opportunities. And we have a couple of films that we're collaborating on right now. One is uh, a romantic comedy that is going to be shot here. Uh, sometime this fall, early or early next year, we're still in pre-production on it, and mm. we're still in pre-production on one that is an action comedy that's going to shoot in uh, Morocco. Oh wow, that's exciting! <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, for me personally, um, like I, I'm a small-time like filmmaker myself. Like I always come through different stories and. Just like kind of how you described, like there were certain movies that just kind of provoked a response in me that wanted to create. And just being able to take that, even if it was acting or just the progression of it, uh, it's something about it that's very amazing. So I definitely can empathize with you on that. I Hopefully you, you uh, get it up really soon. We're definitely excited about that. Yeah, man. You know, when the acting starts back here, I think you whatever, it's hard to, hard to lose that. And for me, you know, it's, but it's really one of the only things that I was ever really great at. Mm. You know, you can, you can be good at certain things, but, you know, I, I, was a, I was an okay football player. I wasn't a great football player. I, mm. You know, I was an okay academic student. But when, when I set foot on the stage, it was like, it was something that I felt I naturally uh, excelled at. And, uh, you know, in Hollywood, though, they look at you physically a lot, and... You know, they see a big guy and they just say, okay, we're going to have him put in a heavy, you know, the, the dog or something like that. And I've always, you know, it's been a double 
catch forward to me. Yes, it's work, but at the same time, I need to always be looking at opportunities to uh, to change people's lives and show them that I'm, uh, I'm more than just somebody who gets shot or does the shooting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that, that's, I can definitely understand that because it's, it could be real easy. They could typecast you just from your physique and just how you are, and even just from being like one set role. So, yeah, it's got to be kind of yeah. difficult. <coughs> um, <Life is struggle. laughs> I can imagine. Um, but you're really versatile in the sense that you go back and forth between film and television. That was one of the things I guess kind of the next question I was going to lead into is like because you cross over so much, like taking like Star Trek franchise. But then, like other TV shows, such as like Sons of Anarchy, Playmakers, Big Love, I mean, it, it, it's a wide range of different films. Like, which do you really prefer? Like, honestly, like if you really think about it, between television and film, um, what what is it that you have more enjoyment with? And moving forward, what do you want to do more of? I know you mentioned like a romantic comedy that you're trying to make, um, but I was just curious about that. Uh, well, you know, they both have their advantages. Um, they're, they're kind of, uh, for those who don't know, but it, it, it's a different process of, um, you know, the way that, uh, a different pace, I should say. Mm. And with, uh, with film, you have the, the luxury of time where you can kind of reshoot things if, if it doesn't go well. Mm. Um, TV, it, it's kind of, I, I kind of uh, say it's more, um, movies are more like a marathon. You just pace yourself and you keep going. Whereas TV is, is kind of a sprint. Mm. Each week, you know, you have, you have a certain number of days to get in that episode. And you might have, you know, three or four scenes that you're shooting in that day. Yeah. And it always seems like a, like a break. You're running at breakneck speed the entire time. Wow. So for me, um, I, I, I like the fast-paced thrill of the TV. Um, but, I, you know, the, the perfectionist in me I really enjoys the, the filmmaking process where you can really get it get it down to, to being a near perfect vision of whatever you, you want, you know, whatever your, uh, your goal is for, for that character's portrayal. Yeah. Um, of getting it out there in the way that, that uh, you really want to do because you have to watch your doing it again and again and again to get it right. Yeah. That's, wow, that's really awesome. I didn't even think about it from that progression of like how many scenes they actually have to shoot per day. Like I know like different TV shows um, where they're like shooting at one location and then they got to shoot another one and then they're going back to back to back until fall begins and they got to start it back all over again. I look at like the Walking Dead series for instance and those guys that just keep the same exact, you know, body type and the way they have to look and it's, it's probably really cumbersome and hard to a lot of degree. Yeah, and, and, and just from a, a script standpoint, you know, those writers are constantly, like, struggling to keep up with, you know, the episode count, because they have to, you know, keep up with the stories as they're coming out. And sometimes you'll find, you know, when there's a big gap where the show has to go down for a couple of weeks to give the, uh, the writers a chance to catch up. Yeah. I, I remember on, like, like uh, Playmakers, for instance, we would be getting, um, you know, our dialogue of what the scene was going to be, like, an hour before we're about to shoot it. Mm. So, wow. It, 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 it does pr pr uh, present some, uh, some challenges where you got to be quick on your feet. Luckily, I've got a pretty good memory to, uh, to be able to uh, memorize that stuff. But, my short term memory is, is like Hercules, but uh, my long term, if you ask me what I ate last week, I, I wouldn't have any idea of what I wore, <laughs> who, who I talked to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's intense. That's intense. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's a whole other thing right there. So, in terms of like genre, um, like you're really diverse as far as the different genres of like film you've done, but You've got some really interesting comedic moments uh, in film. Uh, more notable, like probably like your role in Airborne, um, your role in, uh, of course, the Star Trek series. Like you 
punched out our favorite captain. You know, that was the first time he's introduced to us and you had the honor of doing that. But you've also been blessed with being able to like talk with different comedians such as like Martin Lawrence and Simon Pegg and Jack Black. So you've had different times of being around those kind of comedic element people. Do you prefer more comedic roles though? Um, or are you looking to do more comedy moving forward? Well, you, you, you left out another one who was probably my favorite out of all of them, which was uh, Bernie Mac. Oh, yes. Uh, I got to work with Bernie on the, the Bernie Mac show. Wow, and I forgot about he, that. That was one of, one of the crown jewels of uh, my uh, acting career so far was working with him. And the guy, uh, it was so funny. I, I felt like uh, in the scene that I did with him, his, his sole goal was to, uh, to make me laugh. And I'm trying to play like a serious, you know, character or cop. <laughs> uh <-huh>. um, <laughs> he, uh, he was like, so funny, man. That's um, I, yeah, for me, I, I would love to do uh, comedy in the future. I've tested a few times for network uh, for those uh, comedic uh, sitcoms and series and stuff like that, but nothing's really a bit of concrete at this point, but moving forward, I'm definitely uh, in showcasing that side of me because, you know, as an actor, you want to show off all facets of yourself. Yeah. And, uh, you know, not just one side. So, comedy is part, I, you know, in my own personal life, I'm, I'm cracking up at least, you know, 100 times a day. <laughs> that was definitely, yeah, I mean, life is funny. It is uh, just uh, a very funny experience. When you have two kids, I have people that they before, and they do a lot of funny things. So um, I would love to do uh, comedy and uh, include that in my repertoire. Yeah, that seems really awesome. Like if they have like another show, like maybe like Always Sunny in Philadelphia or Parks and Recreation, like I could see you, you know, just kind of nailing that. That'd be awesome. But um, I guess getting down to the brass hex, so I, I, you are, if I'm not correct, you're going to be in Star Trek Beyond, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so I know you have to be real hush-hush, but is there anything that you can say about your role this time around that might be maybe memorable or just a scene that you were in that kind of would allude to something interesting? Uh, I'm trying to give my fan something, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I wish that I could uh, give you a little more um, information on it. But man, they just, they, they make you sign a contract about the size of the phone book. It says, if I say anything, you know, don't comment, you know, I will be wiped off the face of the earth. But I can say a few, a few general things. Okay. Um, like, uh, you know, in the first uh, movie, you see me as a cadet. Yeah. And, and then later, um, uh, Cruzan is on board the USS uh, Enterprise. Oh, yeah, you were the lieutenant at the time. And, uh, yeah. Well, I wasn't, I, I'm not sure I was lieutenant at that time. I think I just enlisted. Okay. Uh, and then, and the Starfleet. And then in the second one, you know, I, obviously my role seemed a little bit more uh, important because I go on the mission with Spock or her and Kirk, yeah. No capture con. Now a lot of my scenes in that got axed because I was uh, literally uh, killed by um, a Klingon in that, but they never showed it in the final uh, cut. Oh my gosh! So I, yeah, so I, I survived, <laughs> but them not showing it, and uh, that's how I ended up doing the third thing. And. Uh, uh, we're two years into a five-year mission. It's uh, it's kind of a throwback to the original series, you know, which was a, a five-year mission to explore deep space, and um, that was the basis for the original series. So we're two years in on that five-year mission, and uh, we're in deep, deep space, and you know, we we encounter something that kind of makes all hell break loose. Oh wow! And, uh, I can't, I can't wait to see it, uh, the final product. It was a lot of fun shooting. I've, I've seen some of the, 
some of the uh, dailies and stuff like that, they look, it just looks amazing. Yeah. Uh, the color schematics and stuff like that, I think this visually is going to rival something like uh, an avatar where, you know, yeah, you just have these amazing landscapes and amazing creatures and amazing sets. And, and uh, you know, they pulled out all the stops with this one. Yeah, yeah, it definitely has that nostalgic feel of like the older series or even like maybe the Enterprise as well like when you get off the ship and you're kind of like you're a fish out of water kind of sense so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for it. I know they're going to be screening it I think on Wednesday at San Diego. Um, are you going to show up to any of the other panels or to like the Star Trek, um, I think the 50th anniversary is going to be there as well. Are you going to show up to any of those panels? Yeah, I'll be uh, attending the, uh, the premiere, which is on July 20th there in San Diego. We're doing it, I'm not sure if it's at Qualcomm Stadium or, or not, but I know that it's somewhere outdoors on an outdoor IMAX screen. Yeah. With uh, the San Diego Philharmonic playing the score live. Oh, wow. Amazing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, uh, and then the next day I'm going to be at Comic Con doing the signing autograph day in the Seattle Pavilion. I'm not sure where, but uh, I'm doing it Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And uh, yeah, man, I, after that, I, who knows? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, I know that's what I'm going to be doing that's for the foreseeable future right now. That's, that's amazing. I uh, definitely appreciate your time with this interview. Uh, I will be attending San Diego Comic Con, me and my outlet, JVS. So hopefully we get to see you there, maybe uh, interact for a little bit. And uh, I don't know if we'll get there before the premiere, but we would love to. But I don't know if we're going to be there until like late on Wednesday, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. And, and uh, please encourage your viewers, listeners, to uh, follow me at Star Trek Cupcake on our Twitter. At Star Trek Cupcake on Twitter. Okay, I'll definitely do that. I appreciate and, it. And Facebook. I, I don't know what it is on Facebook, but it's just my full name, Jason Matthews, that I can find me there. Yeah, what I'll do is uh, in this kind of like this small video, um, I will post in the description bar below, y'all. Um, so y'all can be able to go and follow him on Twitter. Y'all can follow him on Facebook. And then I'll also put in the link and information. If any of y'all are going to San Diego Comic Con, y'all can be able to definitely check out Jason, maybe get a signing from him. And uh, Jason, you're awesome, man. I really appreciate it. You seem like you got an awesome career ahead of you. You've already done some amazing roles in general on film and in television. And just even what you're inspiring trying to do as a filmmaker, that really inspires me. So I really appreciate you for talking to me. Oh man, my pleasure. I, I hope to get, uh, get a chance to hang with you there at Comic-Con. Yeah, for sure, man. I got your number, so I'm going to text you. <laughs> Come on in. Come on. <laughs> All, right, All right, Jason. I'll talk to you later. All right, buddy. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. There you have it, YouTube. That was Jason Williams Smith. I'm sorry. Not Jason Williams Smith. <laughs> I'm bad. This was Jason Smith that was on Star Trek um, franchise. He's done a great job. He's got a great rap sheet. In general, like I'm just really excited for what he's got coming ahead. And hopefully y'all enjoyed that um, awesome interview that he was like just blessing us with. But uh, you're definitely going to have to go to the description bar below so you can be able to check out Jason Matthew Smith on Facebook. That's his, it's just his name. And then if you go to the Twitter location, I think he had said it was Star Trek Cupcake. His name in <laughs> Star Trek franchise, his name is Cupcake. And uh, hopefully y'all enjoyed that first rate interview. Keep it locked. JVS Wing will stop. And we are going to San Diego Comic Con 2016. Peace, everybody.